In today's video, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily get rid of the sharp edges that are left on EMT conduit and other metal pipes after making your cuts. Let's get into it. EMT conduit is a galvanized steel pipe that you can find in the electrical aisle of your local hardware or home store. It's most commonly used by tradesmen for commercial electrical work, but we like to use it for DIY projects because it's commonly available, it's strong, and it's easy to build with. Whether you're a tradesman or a home DIYer, you'll find yourself cutting conduit into different measurements and lengths. And the process is really simple. We've done a couple of videos on how to cut EMT conduit, both with this simple pipe cutter that you just rotate around the pipe and an electric bandsaw. And you know, like I said, it's a really simple process, but both methods leave a pretty nasty edge on the pipe after making your cut. Not only is this edge sharp, but it can also interfere with accessories like end caps or threaded pipe inserts whenever you're trying to install them into the pipe if you're working on a DIY project. If you're doing electrical work and you have this edge here, if you run wires through the conduit, imagine that, what it's actually intended for. Uh, you know, the wires can actually get caught on the edge and be damaged or just snag and be annoying to run through. There's a lot of different ways that you can deburr EMT conduit and achieve a smooth edge. First, let's look at the simplest option. You may already have this tool. Like I said, we use it all the time. It's great for cutting EMT conduit, but you may not know that it actually has a built-in reamer for deburring conduit. All you have to do is rotate this little triangle piece out of the cutter and it has two sides that will touch the wall of the conduit. And basically you just insert it into the conduit that you want to deburr and spin it around. And after making your cut, you'll see the lip that this cutter can create. So just visually look at it as you're deburring and you'll see it become smooth and have a nice edge. And you know, definitely be careful, don't check with your finger, you might end up cutting yourself. Just kind of visually look at it and you'll see that it's smooth. And not only does it look good, but it also makes it easier if you're trying to you know, put some accessories in the pipe ends, like an end cap, it makes it a lot easier to push them in just like that. I do want to mention that this works best if you're using this cutter because this cutter creates a lip on the inside of the pipe. If you're using a handsaw or a bandsaw, something like that, those usually create a burr on the outer edge, and this doesn't really do that good at you know, deburring the outer edge. But they do have another hand tool that you can use for that, and it's this one here. So this doubles as a deburring tool for the inside, as you can see here, and it also has a tool built in for doing the outside of the pipe. And it works very similarly. You just insert the conduit into it and spin it around. You'll notice that there's some arrow marks on the tool itself, and you just want to follow those and spin in that direction. The tool works fine. It's not my favorite option, but it does work well for getting the outer edges. But you can see here where the cutter has kind of slipped off the reamer on the inside and started to cut into the plastic. I find that it's a little tough to you know, keep it on track and spin it around, but it does work and it's a pretty good option. I think you can get them for under $10. Uh, so you know, definitely an option for you. Just keep that in mind. Another hand tool you can get is actually pretty common. Most major tool brands have a version of this and it's actually a clever design, but it's surprisingly expensive. $34.98. Billy, I need more money. This was around $35. And I think the reason it's so much more expensive than some of the other options is because it has some other tools that are more featured and geared towards tradesmen. Uh, you know, it has a tool for you know, securing couplings and things like that. But honestly, I really wouldn't recommend this tool, not only because of the cost, but also it takes a lot of time, effort, and energy to, to uh, deburr the pipes that you're using it on. Basically, it has hooks, and it's actually designed specifically for EMT conduit, but it has hooks for half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch. And basically, you just slide the conduit over it until the conduit edge is hooked on you know, the appropriate size hook there, and then you just rotate it around. And like I said, it takes a lot of energy and force and time to deburr it, but it does work after a while. And uh, you know, maybe you can say it barely works. But anyway, if you're like me and you're a little lazy and always looking for an opportunity for... You know, they have an option that's actually a power version of this, so if you look at this attachment, it looks very similar to the handheld option. It has the three hooks for the three sizes of EMT conduit. The only difference is this one has a handle because it's meant to be handheld. And this other one has an attachment you can use to attach it to a, a drill or an impact driver like so. But it works the same way. It has the three, uh, the three size hooks like we said. And basically you just slide the conduit over it in the same way, hook it on there, and then spin it around for around 10 to 15 seconds. It works really well to create a clean, smooth edge. Definitely the best out of all the tools we've looked at. 
It is kind of expensive. The, the bit itself is around $23, and if you don't already have an electric drill or impact driver, then that's another added cost. So just keep that in mind. But it's definitely the best option. I do find that if you leave it on there for too long, you know, let it spin for an extended amount of time, it can get kind of hot. So be careful not to touch it and burn yourself. <laughs> Come on, that's too easy. But anyways, let us know down in the comments what your preferred method for deburring metal conduit and other pipes. We'd love to know and hear from you, especially if it's not one that we mentioned today because it's always cool to learn new things. But thanks, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.